Hello everyone, you are watching Scadia.com and I am Dr. Hamad Haider. Today our topic would be the medullary fractures involving both the medial and the lateral medullus and the pylon fractures involving the distal tibial plafond. <clears throat> we will be discussing first initially the medullary fractures which may be isolated that is involving isolated lateral medullus or medial medullus or bimedullary involving both the medulla. Then we will be moving on to discuss the Dennis and Weber classification for the bimedullary fractures. There are different types of classification which are available. Usually there is Lock Hansen and Dennis Weber. Both are utilized and they both have its own pros and cons, but we will be discussing the Dennis and Weber classification in details. Then we will be moving on to the pylon fractures. As you know, the distal tibial plafon is a very important structure as it actually forms the roof of the ankle mortise and the fractures can affect the ankle arthritis and then they can affect the talus and the ankle biomechanics as well. So we will be discussing the pylon fractures, their classification that is the Rudy Allen Gover classification and I will also be briefly touching upon the pylon fractures AO classification as well. Then we will moving on to the ankle fractures in children which is very common as the children have a very high tendency to fall especially from uh, heights because they're always jumping around during the player play and there is always a chance of twisting injuries and we'll be discussing the salter harris classification as well as the other classification especially called the dice and tangent classification which is actually a modification of uh, the log hansen classification for ankle fractures in children then we'll be touching upon briefly upon the two very important entities which is uh, the t lox fracture as well as the triplane fracture and why i'm discussing this is because these are one of the more common injuries and they involve the children more frequently and they usually need surgical operative intervention which is important because these triplane and t lox fracture have high tendency to complicate later on which could be in form of uh, labial discrepancy in ankle angulation and later on multiple other problems can occur with the children if for uh, other videos related to orthopedics keep watching scardia.com thank you very much